everyone, it's Sam aka Ocean Unknown and welcome back to my channel. This video is the next episode of my series of looking at characters and analyzing them through the theatrical lens. I wonder who this episode is about. So let's get into the video. And of course, spoilers are ahead. Pokemon Legends Arceus is a Pokemon game for the Nintendo Switch that was released on January 28, 2022. The game takes the main character back in time to the Hisui region, which was the Sinnoh region hundreds of years ago. The main character is sent back in time by the god or main deity of the Pokemon world, Arceus, to seek out all Pokemon and help the people of the Hisui region. Throughout the story, they meet the ancestors of many characters from the current Sinnoh region, such as the gym leaders, frontier brains, and members of the current evil team, Team Galactic. Among these ancestor characters is the one we're discussing in this video, Volo. Volo is the main villain of Pokemon Legends Arceus and is the ancestor of the current champion of the Sinnoh region, Cynthia. He starts the story as just a simple merchant who is a member of the Ginkgo Guild. The main character is introduced to Volo right before going on their first mission and he gives you potions after beating him in a Pokemon battle. He appears throughout the main story mostly to deliver items and encourage the main character. When the main character is exiled from the main town of Hasui, Jubilee Village, during the final chapter of the main story, Volo seeks them out and offers to aid them. They head to the ancient retreat to meet Kogita, another potential ancestor of Cynthia who has been teaching Volo about Pokemon mythology. After talking with Kogita, Volo accompanies the main character to Lake Verity, Lake Valor, and Lake Acuity to find the red chain alongside the legendary lake trio, Mesprit, Uxie, and Azok. Once the red chain is assembled, Volo, who is eager for a chance to see history unfold, follows the main character to the Temple of Sinnoh as they prevent Komodo, the boss of the galaxy team, from summoning the legendary Pokemon of time and space, Dialga and Palkia. Kamado was attempting to close the space-time rift on top of Mount Coronet in order to create a better world. The main story ends with the main character catching either Dialga or Palkia, and the galaxy team goes back to just researching Pokemon. In the post-game of Pokemon Legends Arceus, Volo enlists the main character on a mission to find the remaining plates that the character has been finding throughout the main story. There are 18 plates, each representing the 18 Pokemon types, and these plates are used for Arceus to change its type along with its signature move, Judgment, in battle. After the main character finds 17 of them, Volo takes them to the Celestica ruins to see a destroyed statue. He tells them that the statue was of another legendary Pokemon, Giratina. Giratina is a ghost and dragon type Pokemon who controls antimatter and was banished to the distortion world for trying to overthrow Arceus. Basically, it's the Pokemon equivalent of the devil. After mentioning Giratina and how it could appear at the Temple of Sinnoh, waiting for another chance to strike against Arceus, Volo starts to lose his composure. He gets giddy at the thought of uncovering the secret of the universe and seeing the legendary Pokemon. Volo then reveals his ideals to the main character and how with the knowledge of mythology in the universe, he wishes to create a new, better world. The main character finds him at the top of Mount Coronet at the Temple of Sinnoh. Volo out loud acknowledges the damages Dialga and Palkia caused to the Temple of Sinnoh, saying it's like pillars now turned to spears, sapping into the heavens, which is a reference to what the Temple of Sinnoh is called in present day Sinnoh, Spear Pillar. He then says, I dare say you deserve to know what I'm really after by now. Ever since I became convinced that Arceus really does exist, there has been one question that consumed my thoughts. How can I meet such a being myself? It was in an attempt to answer this question that I originally sought out Giratina and had to open up that rift in space and time. After all, Giratina wished to stand against Arceus, but that didn't do the trick. So then I had you gather the fragments of the all-encompassing deity, just as the murals of the ruins detected. Eighteen plates said to be the fragments of the all-encompassing deity. You hold in your hand seventeen of them, so you must be wondering, where is the last one? Volo reveals that he had the 18th and final plate, the spooky plate for the ghost type, the whole time. He then does probably my favorite thing to ever happen in a Pokemon game, a RuPaul's Drag Race level costume reveal. I got a trick of my sleeve. Oh, y'all wanted a twist, eh? It is here that Volo's true plan is revealed. He wants to use all of the plates to meet Arceus and to fulfill his desires of learning the secrets of the world. Along with that, he wishes to use Arceus' powers to create a new world. He says, Of course, if I create a brand new world, then this Hisui region that we currently exist in will be undone and return to nothing. 
You, everyone you know, and all of the Pokemon living here will vanish in an instant, as if you've never been. Then, Volo challenges the main character to a Pokemon battle, and the battle begins. Not only does his battle music have the same melody as his Descendants theme in Pokemon Diamond and Pearl, but his Team Up 6 Pokemon is nearly identical to Cynthia's. Opening up with Spiritomb, and followed by Roserade, Lucario, Garchomp, and Togekiss. The only Pokemon missing is Cynthia's Milotic, and Volo uses a Hsuian Arcanine instead, which has a purpose that I will discuss later. Volo's battle on top of Spear Pillar is by far one of the hardest battles in the history of Pokemon, and it's not even over yet. After the main character defeats his team of six, he says, No, no, this isn't finished yet. Can you feel it? The chill creeping through your veins? The eldritch presence ice in your heart? And then, well, I'll just play the clip. <laughs> This scene is in my top five favorite moments in Pokemon, maybe even top three. How I painted it and it's in my studio right now. Giratina appears behind Volo and fights on his side. This man befriended the devil and now the main character has to fight Giratina. Giratina is a legendary Pokemon, so it is not easy to defeat, but if you're lucky enough to beat it, this happens. gains its full health back and switches into its origin form. In a way, Volo's battle is a 6 versus 8 Pokemon battle and every single second of it is difficult. Once the main character defeats Giratina for the second and final time, Giratina goes back to the distortion world and Volo is defeated. Volo is distraught after losing and says, turning tail and running from this puny human? Pathetic! I was the one to feed you the power you needed so you could take on Arceus. I was the one who gave you the chance to claw open that space-time rift, driving the deity of space and time mad so that you could drag the creator out of hiding. How? How could this happen? Almighty Arceus, if you have any heart within you, then tell me. The blood of the ancient Sinnoh people flows in my veins, does it not? What is it then that you find so lacking in me? Do you mean to tell me that this world doesn't need to be remade? I can't live with such questions. I can't bear not satisfying this ink to know. He then asked the main character if they've ever had a dream. Have you ever had a dream that that you, um, you had your... If they have some dream that propels them, like he had, the player can answer yes or no to this question. After the question, he gives the main character the plate he received from Giratina, and the main character now has all 18 plates. He says, My journey is over. The story ended when I lost to you. With the 18 plates in hand, the main character's flute, which is used throughout Pokemon Legends Arceus, transforms into the Azure Flute, which is the instrument used to summon Arceus. At the sight of the Azure Flute, Volo says, So that's... That's it, the Azure Flute. It comes to you. So Arceus wishes to meet you. Of all people, you had to be the one. Is that why you were brought to this world? I have no desire to watch from the sidelines as Arceus comes to you. And I absolutely cannot accept a world in which you would ever manage to defeat Arceus. Someday, I'll solve every riddle in the legends of Hisui's Pokemon. And on that day, I'll stand before Arceus at last. No. I will conquer it, no matter how many years, how many decades, how many centuries it takes me. He leaves Spear Pillar, and this marks the end of his story in Pokemon Legends Arceus. Just like in my first Theatrical Lens video, we have to identify the protagonist, antagonist, given circumstances, climax, and the major dramatic question. Video games like Pokemon Legends Arceus work differently than both on-stage and on-screen storytelling because the audience and characters in a way become one. In video games, the controllable character is automatically the protagonist, whereas the antagonist is those who the playable character fights. 
With Pokemon Legends Arceus in mind, the protagonist would be the main character, also known as Rei and Akari, which are the default names for them. Volo is the antagonist because he has an evil plan and wishes to kill the main character and the whole world. However, in theater, the protagonist and antagonist of Pokemon Legends Arceus are completely different. Like I mentioned in my Raven Queen video, a protagonist in theater is the person who is trying to achieve a goal, whereas the antagonist is the person actively trying to stop the protagonist from achieving their goals. In the theatrical lens, Volo is the protagonist of Pokemon Legends Arceus, and the main character is the antagonist. Volo has a clear goal of meeting Arceus and creating a new world, and the main character opposes this. Unlike films and TV shows where there are possibly many characters who oppose the protagonist, in a video game like Pokemon, there are many cases where it is just the main character opposing the protagonist. This is very evident in Pokemon Legends Arceus. As for given circumstances, these can get interesting with Pokemon Legends Arceus in a very similar way to Ever After High. Both of these play with the idea of ancestry and familiarity to the audience. Pokemon Legends Arceus does this by making the majority of the characters ancestors of characters from Pokemon Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum. 16 year old games that are fan favorites among the fan base mostly due to the story and characters. Volo's given circumstances are that he is the ancestor of Cynthia, he is a descendant of the ancient Sinnoh people who came before the Hisui region, and he used Giratina to open the space-time rift on top of Mount Coronet. The given circumstances of Volo's character are intended to give the audience an idea behind why Volo is who he is, and also to give the audience a sense of familiarity when seeing Volo due to his connection to Cynthia. Next is the climax. Surprisingly, the climax of video games is quite similar to climaxes in theater. Normally, the climax of a video game is the final boss battle and achieving victory, like how in theater the climax is when the protagonist either achieves or doesn't achieve their goal. Pokemon Legends Arceus is an odd outlier of this. The video game climax of the game is in the main story being when the main character catches Dialga or Palkia. However, the climax of Pokemon Legends Arceus in the theatrical lens is when Volo is defeated. His defeat answers his question. What question is it? It's major dramatic question time! Volo's major dramatic question is, will Volo understand the current world and create a new world? While I could have said, will Volo meet Arceus rather than understand the current world, I chose not to because major dramatic questions are often meant to be broad and a little vague. Throughout the game, Volo seeks out any opportunity to learn about Hisui's mythology and the legendary Pokemon that reside in Hisui. He does this because he wants to understand the current world, including the deities that created the current world. Volo seeks out Arceus not only to understand the secrets of the universe, but also to harness its power to create a new, better world. He decided that in order to meet Arceus, he needed to find Giratina to cause Arceus to rampage, which is also what caused the main character to come to the Hasui region. The answer to Volo's major dramatic question is answered after he and Giratina are defeated. He starts out with the answer being no, thinking that he cannot meet Arceus because the world doesn't need to be rebuilt and made better. He becomes content with this at first, understanding that he was wrong in his ways. However, after the main character gets the Azure Flute to meet Arceus, Volo swears that he will discover all of Hisui's mythological secrets and conquer Arceus, no matter how many years, decades, or centuries it takes him. This changes the answer to his major dramatic question from a no to more of a question mark? Since this is a video game where we're seeing from only one character's eyes, we don't know if Volo continues to attempt to conquer Arceus and create a new world. We do know, however, that Volo will eventually die and his descendant, Cynthia, will take on his interest in Pokemon mythology and legends, but not how he did. For now, unless Volo makes a return to the Pokemon series, the answer to his major dramatic question is a no since he didn't learn to understand the current world and create a new one. Similarly to my Ever After High video, I will discuss some theories about Volo and Pokemon Legends Arceus as a whole. A popular theory about Volo that I found by YouTuber Birdkeeper Toby is that Volo, like the main character of Pokemon Legends Arceus, is a time traveler. In Toby's video, he creates this theory that Volo is from the past before the Hisui region and is one of the ancient Sinnoh people like how he mentioned that the blood of the ancient Sinnoh people flows in his veins. This line could also just mean that he is the descendant of the ancient Sinnoh people whereas maybe most of the other characters in Pokemon Legends Arceus aren't. More evidence to back up Birdkeeper Toby's theory is that Kogita, Cynthia's other ancestor, and Volo don't really know each other. They don't talk in a familial way with each other. There are also old verses that the main character can find throughout the story that imply that the ancient Sinnoh people came to Hisui from another region called Sinjo, which is implied to be the Johto region in the past, and that they were the first to make contact with Arceus, which would explain Volo's fascination with Arceus. This would also
also explain Volo's ancient Grecian outfit because the ancient architecture in the game like the Temple of Sinnoh and the Celestica ruins are very inspired by Grecian architecture like the Parthenon. This theory would mean that Kogita is Volo's only descendant of the ancient Sinnoh people and then Hisui factioned off into the Diamond and Pearl clans. While this theory has a lot of evidence of plausibility, it is just a theory. Another popular theory stated by both Birdkeeper Toby and Hoops and Hip Hop on YouTube is that not only is Volo Cynthia's ancestor, he is also related to Lusamine, the president of the Aether Foundation and the main villain of Pokemon Sun and Moon. The main piece of evidence is that Lusamine and Volo's designs are similar with yellow, white, gold with pops of green being their main color schemes. They also both have a fascination with Arceus. Volo's is more apparent, but Lusamine is also shown to have an interest in Arceus in Pokemon Sun and Moon by creating the Pokemon type Null, which was created to fight beasts and gods. If I make a Lusamine-centered video in the series, which I might, I'll delve deeper into her motives. Volo and Lusamine also share a common trope in Pokemon of characters almost cosplaying as a Pokemon related to them. With Lusamine, she bears a resemblance to Feramosa, and she dresses her daughter Lily like Nihilego. Those Pokemon are Ultra Beasts, which are what she's searching for, whereas Volo rocks an Arceus cosplay, despite never seeing what Arceus looks like. Once again, these are just theories, but they sometimes help the audience understand Volo as a character and make Pokemon Legends Arceus more enjoyable as a game. Lastly, let's discuss various elements of theater in Volo's character. First and foremost, let's talk about mirror and foil characters with Volo. Since Pokemon Legends Arceus ties into the characters of Pokemon Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum, Volo is a foil or mirror character for many characters. The most important mirror for his character is the main villain of Pokemon Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum, Cyrus. Cyrus is the leader of the evil Team Galactic, and his goal is basically the exact same as Volo's, to create a new, better world and destroy the current world. However, while Volo and Cyrus are very similar in their motives and goals, they're also foils for each other. While Volo was incredibly passionate about Pokemon mythology and creating a new world, Cyrus was not. Volo's motives and actions are very based in passion, emotion, and spirit, and those things are exactly what Cyrus is against. In the events of Pokemon Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum, Cyrus wishes to create a new world because he wishes for a world without emotion or human spirit. His goals are accredited to his ideology that emotions are what causes pain in this world. He's basically a villain in the AT cinematic universe when you think about it. This is human emotion. Unlike Cyrus, who has a sinister motive based in taught ideology, Volo's motives come from extreme fascination and curiosity. Where Cyrus is based in apathy, Volo is based in passion. Volo and his descendant, Cynthia, also work as both mirror and foil characters. They are foils as Cynthia's goodness emphasizes Volo's evil personality. Both of them have a strong interest in Pokemon mythology and history, share the same melodies in their battle themes, and have nearly identical teams. I am finally going to discuss Volo's team in the final battle against him. Something that YouTuber JPR Pokatrainer98 mentions in his video, How Pokemon Crafted the Perfect Battle, is that Volo's ace Pokemon directly contrasts Cynthia's ace. Cynthia's strongest Pokemon, or ace, is her iconic Garchomp, a fierce and powerful Landshark dragon that is a ground and dragon type. Volo's ace is a Togekiss, a cute yet strong fairy and flying type. Fairy types are immune to dragon types, and flying types are immune to ground types, making Togekiss an exact contrast and counter to Garchomp. Also, Garchomp as a pseudo-legendary is seen as a fighter, whereas Togekiss is seen as a soft healer. This is possibly intentional irony because Cynthia, a hero, uses the fearsome Garchomp, which is seen as a strong, threatening Pokemon, whereas Volo, a terrifying villain, uses Togekiss, a Pokemon known for healing and helping others. Now to the biggest question surrounding Volo's team. Why does he have a Hisuian Arcanine rather than a Milotic? This is up for any interpretation, so here is mine. Hisuian Arcanine's place on Volo's team shows that Volo is incredibly flawed as a character, especially comparing him to his descendant. Hisui and Arcanine is a rock and fire type, which is four times weaker against water types. What is Milotic? A water type Pokemon. Also, Hisui and Arcanine, along with his Roserade, only has three moves. This could be more symbolism of Volo being an incompetent trainer and not as advanced in battling as he claims to be. Volo also has a minor foil character in Komodo, the boss of the galaxy team in Pokemon Legends Arceus. Komodo also wishes 
to create a new, better world, but Kamado is trying to accomplish this for good and for the good of the Hisuian people, whereas Volo is doing it selfishly. Lastly, Kogita is also a minor foil character for Volo. They are both ancestors to Cynthia and are interested in Pokemon mythology. They share a distinct difference that tells us about their characters, their names. In Latin, Volo means will, but can be translated to want or desire, whereas Kogito means think. Both of their names are deprived from the Latin phrases cogito ergo sum and volo ergo sum. Cogito ergo sum means I think, therefore I am, whereas volo ergo sum means I want, therefore I am. Cogita knows a lot about the mythology of the Hisui region and researches it. She learns and therefore thinks and therefore is. Volo actively desires things such as meeting Arceus and creating a new world. He desires and takes action so one day he can have what he desires and become that. Another fun connection with their names is that Sentia, a Latin word which is where we get the name Cynthia, means I feel. This connects the legendary lake trio of Pokemon Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum and Pokemon Legends Arceus to Kogita, Volo, and Cynthia. Uxi, Azelf, and Mesprit, the lake trio, represent knowledge, willpower, and emotion. What is that? Oh! <laughs> It's a foreshadow. Volo's character features a lot of foreshadowing towards his true nature and betrayal. This goes all the way back to the tutorial phase of the game where Volo teaches the main character a special technique to catch Pokemon. What technique is this exactly? The backstrike technique. He tells the main character to hit the Pokemon when they least expect it, which is basically backstabbing them. This foreshadows how he backstabs the main character in the end. <laughs> Another piece of foreshadowing is how in the beginning of the game, he scares the main character by sneaking up behind them and saying boo. While this to some may come off as Volo just being mischievous, it foreshadows his betrayal and by saying boo, foreshadows that he has the spooky ghost type play all along. He also has a tendency to be in the most random places for a merchant to be throughout the story, which could mean that he was constantly stalking the main character. The last piece of foreshadowing I'll discuss is in his name. Volo is the suffix in the word diavolo. And no, I'm not talking about the Jojo character. Diavolo is the Italian word for devil, which is perfect for Volo considering his affiliation with the Pokemon devil, Giratina. Lastly, I'm going to discuss his design and the color psychology behind his design. Since Volo has two different designs in the game, I'm going to discuss both of his designs. Starting off with his merchant outfit for most of the game, he wears a blue and yellow Ginkgo Guild uniform which covers most of his body. These colors are very intentional. Blue in color psychology is associated with trust and reliability, which works to create a false sense of security when the main character is around Volo. Yellow, on the other hand, is associated with logic, knowledge, childlike wonder, and mischief. Colorpsychology.org says that people who favor the color yellow have high expectations of themselves and from others. Due to their short temper, they can be harsh on themselves and people around them. It stands for cowardice, deceitfulness, impulsiveness, and egoism. High levels of exposure to yellow can also lead to aggression and irritability. Yellow person personality types can often be too judgmental, spiteful, and have a lack of empathy. This matches Volo's unkept temper and deceit in the game. For his design in the post-game, he wears an ancient Grecian outfit that resembles Arceus with a matching white, green, and gold color scheme. Green is well known as the color of envy, which represents Volo's envy towards the main character for being chosen by Arceus over him. Green also represents growth and renewal, which rather than representing any growth that Volo made in the game, it represents his desire to renew the universe. White in color psychology traditionally symbolizes purity and innocence, which is ironic for Volo. However, white can also be associated with seeking enlightenment, excellence, or perfection. White can also be an indicator of an end of a life and the start of a new one, which relates to Volo's desire to create a new world. The negative traits surrounding the color white are ignorance and emptiness, which Volo experiences in his desires. Lastly, gold is often associated with prowess and goodness, which further adds to the irony of Volo's design. This makes sense, as Volo is an ironic character as he at first doesn't think what he is doing is wrong. Adding on to the irony, gold is the color of victory and is connected to the sun. Volo wears gold to appear powerful, godlike like Arceus. He does have a bit of a god complex. I mean, look at this guy. He looks like he listens to My Ordinary Life by the Living Tombstone on repeat. The sun connection is actually quite important, since in Pokemon Diamond and Pearl, Cyrus's name is derived from the sun, whereas Volo's ancestor, Cynthia, has her name derived from the moon. Gold represents Volo's obsession with Arceus even more, as well as adding to his irony as a character. All in all, Volo from 
from Pokemon Legends Arceus is a character that has a lot of theatrical elements within his story. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a like, subscribe to the channel, and turn on the bell for notification. Comment down below what characters you would like to see me analyze next in this series. See you all in the next video! Thank you so much!